What's up guys? This is Beers for Build. I'm Chris. I finally got the shop clean enough that I could skateboard in it, but I didn't bring my skateboard. So uh, I'll put that on timeout for the time being. We are back working on the Lotus Evora. I'm very excited because the commenters, thank you very much, pointed out that this bushing is in the wrong spot and that might fix our suspension problem. And I'm super excited to jump on this and see if that fixes it. I really think it will. And then we're like, we got very limited suspension problems and not that many really problems at all. Really? I mean, when you think about it, other than broken fiberglass everywhere. But other than that, I mean, the important shit stuff is, uh, you know, it's, it's coming together. It's coming together. I'm very excited. So uh, I'm going to stop talking and start working on that. Let's take things apart, squish things together. A little smash bang pow, and we'll get that thing all working. All right, for those of you that don't know, the, uh, the commenters were talking about this uh, piece right here saying it was slid over and that the bushing has slid out of its housing. That's totally correct. They noticed that just from being on film and this needs to be fixed and we're hoping that once I slide that over that'll sh uh, slide our shock and our uh, spring a little bit over in the housing and it's going to be right back where it wants to be. So that's the hope. I'm going to go ahead and disassemble this so we can get the bushing back and center. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to disassemble this lower tie rod connection. Um, that way we can uh, start fixing that and removing the snapped off piece of metal from the inside of the lower tie rod connector. Get to work. All right guys, so it was a little bit troublesome getting this bushing back in here, but I finally did. Uh, this piece is still hot. So what I went ahead and did was um, I took the blowtorch and heated up the outer part, this aluminum part. Aluminum is a metal that dissipates heat really well and it heats really evenly so you can kind of heat it in this area and it'll end up heating this whole collar. It's actually really hot. So I heated this up, that'll expand it a little bit. Hopefully the, you know, the, the piece of steel inside won't heat up as fast and that makes this a little bit bigger than normal. And then I stuck a collar around the outside of this and just hammered it over and that actually did get it to scoot over nicely back to where it goes. Now that's awesome, but here's the bad part. When you look at this, we're going back and forth here, and this is really what we're changing. It has nothing to do with this. So that's a bummer. Uh, there's more exploration to be done. Uh, I need to figure out what's going on there. You know, like we said, it's only about a centimeter, but there's a centimeter, you know, mistaken. There's a centimeter off somewhere. So I'm looking down at the shock. That looks okay. Um, it's probably, uh, we need, I need to take a look at the lower subframe. So uh, I'm not going to do that right now. What I'm going to do right now is we have our lower tie rod whoops, and the other part that goes into it. And this is snapped off inside here. And uh, I'm going to start looking at ways to get this out of here. One way that I might use is I might just weld this old piece onto here, right here. And that'll, again, heating stuff up helps to get it loose. And then, uh, you know, that'll heat this thing up and I might be able to bust it loose a little bit. But also taking this bolt off might help as well. So. Uh, I'm going to start getting into that. Alright, well that was really easy actually. Just loosening up this bolt uh, brought the whole broken piece off with it. So you can see this is where it bent and snapped off. So um, we need a new one of these. I was thinking about um, just making one from some threaded rod that you can buy you know, from any metal supply store and then we could TIG weld on our own little bolt. Uh, just because of uh, the speed of getting it here, getting one here from the UK could take a long time and that would be kind of a bummer. Um, but then I, uh, I, I learned by looking at this that um, one of these is threaded one way and the other one's threaded the other way. So this is like, uh, it goes, threads go this way and then they reverse and they go the other way. So this, this side is actually reverse threaded. So when you go to screw something in with this, you actually screw it the opposite way and it, and it screws on. So it's, it's pretty cool, uh, but we're not going to be able to make one um, now. So uh, I'll be on the phone with Lotus tomorrow trying to get one of these. Hopefully it's a part that they use on other cars and um, you know, we can get easily. So now that we've got that all sorted out and we kind of know where we stand with that um, and we know what we need to get, uh, I'm going to jump underneath the car. Is that what I'm doing next? Yeah. I'm going to jump underneath the car and pull some of the other stuff uh, out and try and figure out what's going on with our lower control arm and why that shock tower is in the wrong spot. So 
so it's kind of a good news, bad news situation. So this uh, came off from underneath the car. This covers up the bottom of the engine components. Um, these holes are kind of where some exhaust uh, pipes poke out. This is where it scoops in some air, and right here also scoops in some air. This part's damaged, uh, may have been damaged from the wreck, might not have been. Um, it could have been from like a pothole in California. I can, I, I can uh, verify that they do exist and they could easily do this. So this is something that we'll fix um, in our own time. It's going to be very easy to fix. It's just riveted aluminum, um, so that's no problem. So anyways, we pulled this off to gain access to the engine area. And when we did that, um, I got a lot better uh, view of the mounting points and where the lower control arm mounts to the subframe. And um, I just grabbed a measuring tape and did some measurements. And the bad news is that the lower control arm on this side, when we go to this far edge, is a lot closer to the subframe, closer to the chassis of the car, than on the other side. So that's the bad news. That means that um, one of the mounting points on this is bent. Uh, it's not off by much though. So the good news though is that these points are very accessible They're gonna be very easy to work on and um, the subframe overall looks totally fine So I'm not replacing the subframe, but uh, we will need to modify whatever one of these mounting points either bend it back or uh, Modify the bracket the, the mounting point uh, bracket or something like that, you know, so this comes back out It's about a, a quarter to a half of an inch off. So basically uh, if you could take the lower the, the back mounting point for this lower control arm and move it out a half an inch, uh, we'd be back on track. So it's not it's not the end of the world by any means. Um, and yeah, it's really good news that we can access everything from up here. So uh, I'll grab the camera and show you guys the underneath of this car. It's pretty cool. So here we are on the bottom side. That's our diffuser. It's got a, a couple crinkled spots that we'll be working on. Uh, again, just aluminum. Uh, not that hard to work with. A lot of it is riveted aluminum. Um, this is the mounting point that is suspect for the uh, lower control arm. That's a rear mounting point for the lower control arm. Um, and then when you look down here, after we've uncovered that, you know, you can see some exhaust components, oil pan, engine access, um, lots of fun stuff. And then um, up over here is the front mounting point for the control arm. So very easily accessed. There's bolts right through here and um, same on the back. Easy to get at, easy to access. So that's the next thing that I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to start looking at some of these bolts and maybe even pop some off and just start inspecting things and see where we're wrong. Um, I have found uh, one part that we're for sure going to want to replace, which is the rear sway bar um, is damaged uh, beyond repair. So the rear sway bar, it shoots uh, right through here all the way back and uh, looks like, well, looks different on the other side because this one's bent. So because this is bent, I'm going to replace this. Luckily, I know a guy in Portland that I found on eBay that actually has that part, and he's got some other parts too. We might luck out and be able to get, so I'll be on the phone with him um, tomorrow trying to get some of those parts. But for now, I'm gonna jump back down in there and start looking at some of that stuff. All right, guys, good news. It's just all good news. I'm gonna bring you down there and I'm gonna show you what I found. All right, I'm sorry ahead of time. This is gonna be really hard to film. Uh, small spaces here, but I just wanna show you. So this is our lower control arm leading back here. This is the mounting point to the subframe. Um, I was underneath and I'll show you more, but the subframe is definitely not bent. If you can see this little uh, piece of metal here, I don't know if that's aluminum or what it is, but it's riveted to the subframe and it's like a spacer. Then you have what's kind of like a camber bolt right here. I don't know if you guys have ever played with those to adjust your camber on, uh, on shocks on your car. Anyways, it, it kind of uh, leaves room for this bolt to slide up and down and move a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to be able to get the camera on the back side of it, but on the back side of it, this plate is smashed up and this bolt has shot too far back that way. So this little plate is damaged. Now comes the hard part. Let me bring you, sorry, giving everybody motion sickness. Let me bring you to the other side. All right, now we're on the other side of where that bolt comes in and you can kind of just see it right there. And you can kind of see, sorry about this guys, but you can kind of see what it looks like when that bolt's just smashed that little metal plate. And that's it, that's our problem right there. This bolt needs to be loosened up and adjusted so this washer can slide down. These plates need to be replaced uh, so they're not all smashed and letting the bolt slide back there. And that's our half inch that we were talking about earlier. That'll slide this lower control arm out half of an inch and get us back in alignment. So overall, it's really great that it's just this stupid little plate. And you can see that our, our subframe is straight and flush and like a 90 degree angle. And uh, everything's great down here. It's just this little plate that needs to be replaced. So we'll be drilling these out, popping them off, figuring out how to make new ones and, and get new ones on there. Make or order new ones. So I'm stoked. 
All right, well, that's it for me for tonight. I'll be back tomorrow and continue working on this car. You know, overall, uh, I think this is good news. It wasn't as simple as what we thought in the first place. So myself and the commenters, you know, kind of thought of just moving that bushing over, but it's not a big massive problem, which has got me very happy. And I'm very confident in our ability to fix that issue, uh, either by ordering the parts <coughs> or fabricating them ourselves. I'm not too worried about that at all. So I'm very excited to get working on fixing this thing up and get this rear end in, in good shape. Um, and yeah, we're gonna get back to it tomorrow. See you then. What's up guys, I'm back. A uh, little bit of bad news. So the, our, our tie rod, or I don't know if it's called a tie rod, but it's, it's the toe adjustment linkage, this bolt right here that you, you can adjust it with, um, that was snapped that we talked about yesterday. Uh, I called Lotus to get a new one and they won't sell me just this bolt, they'll only sell me the whole entire setup with both the ends and then that's 160 something dollars, 161 dollars. So I really don't wanna do that. I went looking all around town today for any threaded rod that was um, the same size or anything like that and these are a really special thread pitch. Um, so that didn't work. Um, if anybody online can find out how to get me one of these, I'll buy it from anywhere. Um, if not, I'm, I got a couple more metal supply places I'm gonna hit up and try and check this out. I'm gonna go to a place where I get all the sheet metal for the louvers and things that I do like that and see if they have any of this stuff. Um, Cause at 161 bucks, I'd rather fabricate my own piece. But uh, if anybody can find one from a parts car online or anything like that, shoot me a link. That would be very helpful. So for now, that's all gone and it's time to move on to the lower control arm. I'm gonna go ahead and it's not gonna come all the way off cause there's a lot of things that I would have to take off for no reason. Um, but I do want to take it out, pull the bolts out of it, and inspect those little, um, I did look these up on the part numbers too, the little, they're called like camber bolt plates or something like that. So they're those little plates that I showed you in the last video. I'm going to pull everything out and apart from that and then pull those plates out and inspect them and see what we want to do with them. All right, well I got the two bolts um, off that connect this to the chassis, the uh, lower control arm to the chassis. Um, it does not want to budge. I've got it like supported by the jacket. It really doesn't want to move anywhere. Um, after inspecting the little plates, the um, camber bolt plates, they look all right. They don't, they don't look in too bad a shape. I mean, they're, they're slightly bent, but there's no reason to, uh, the plates actually rivet on and there's no reason to drill them out um, and rebuild them. I mean, they're just like slightly bent. So actually, what I'm like, so when you look in there, there's a slot uh, that goes back and forth about a half inch or three quarters of an inch. And our, our, uh, our bolt holding this thing on was all the way jacked that way. And then, so if we bring it back the other way, um, the opposite way, we should get that half inch out that we're talking about. So I'm gonna grab my friend, the handy dandy mallet, and try and um, coax this thing back out this way a little bit. And hopefully that'll get our spring uh, and shock tower in order. All right, we fixed it. You can see the clearance between the shock tower and the shock. It's got that nice like half, like three quarter centimeter, centimeter gap. We'll go to the other side to show you for comparison. You can see the amount of gap is very similar. So I'm very happy we got this fixed. Really all it was was uh, loosening those bolts that were had slid over, loosening them up, tapping some things around and tightening them back down. So now that that's all good, we're just waiting on our replacement part or refabricating our other part to adjust the toe. I'm gonna go ahead and button everything back up. All right guys, well that was really cool. I'm really glad we were able to get that done. Uh, we got the shock tower back in the right spot without really needing to buy any new parts or anything crazy like that. So that is a win in my book. Um, the loss in my book is we gotta find that bolt. We gotta figure that out. If anybody lives the next door to Lotus, give those guys a chip chip cheerio, bolt me up mate uh, call and Somebody, somebody get me a bolt. I need one of them bolts. Um, or, you know, if we have to, I'll just buy the full component set. Uh, it won't be the end of the world, but it'd be cool to be able to just get the bolt because I don't need the other parts. Um, so thank you guys very much for watching. I'm really excited. We're just making progress. I got a, a rear sway bar. Um, a person here in Portland has one of those. So I'm going to grab one of those up. And then once we have that rear linkage put back together, the rear end is done and all the suspension is a-okay. So then the next thing we're going to work on is the front end and the radiator. 
The next episode is actually going to be the Oregon 500 500 where we get to drive our Beamer around this weekend. It's going to be a fun weekend. And then we're back onto the Evora and we'll be working on that front end, getting the radiator all hooked up, whatever that really means. It doesn't have any fluid in it right now. So we're going to, you know, diagnose the radiator, fill the cooling system, and then kick the engine on and give that a test. So uh, I'm very excited. I cannot wait to hear this thing run. That's going to be a really exciting point. And at that point, if we have it running and if I can find some wheels, um, then there's no reason we couldn't take it out for a drive. So uh, lots of exciting stuff to come uh, really soon with the Sivora before we have to move into the bodywork uh, segment of it. Thank you guys very much for watching. You can find us at facebook.com slash build and we are BS for build on Instagram. We also have our website bsforbuild.com where you can find any of our, our merchandise, our hats, our t-shirts. We have key tags, beer koozies. We got all sorts of great stuff on there. Um, all that stuff is designed by myself, built by myself when applicable and shipped out by myself just so all the proceeds of that goes directly into uh, the builds here. There's no middleman. It just goes straight, literally straight into the builds. So thank you guys all so much for all the support with that. It's been amazing. And just thanks overall for all the support. Uh, thank you guys very much. Please remember to like and subscribe. Peace. Come, come.